Westfield State University. The Parliament with Rebecca Rickson. Tonight's guest is Wiley Olmstead with Game Spin, featuring Drew's News Update and Kelly's Corner, Random Thoughts, and Dealing with Dave. And now, here's your host, Rebecca Rickson. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of The Parliament. I am your host, Rebecca Rickson. On tonight's show, we will have a video game discussion, Drew's News, Dealing with Dave, Random Thoughts, and an interview with the captain of the Westfield State basketball team. Tonight's show is full of excitement. Speaking of, I had a very exciting day, but it turned quickly into a sticky situation. I woke up extra early and made it to breakfast for once. Not only that, I got dressed. And when I say I got dressed, I mean I put something besides yoga pants and a baggy sweatshirt on. It's also been wonderful because I'm here hosting the show. With all that being said, it's been a great day until I ran into every Westfield State Tinder match I have. Right then and there, I knew things took a turn for the worse. No need to explain every awkward encounter, I'm just going to explain how to survive it. Plain and simple, don't match with anyone from your school. But let's get real, that's impossible. Here are some quick easy steps. Look good every day so your pictures aren't considered fake. And don't be that creepy person and stare like you are completely obsessed. Don't act like you're a couple and don't play that look down at my phone game, I don't know you, I'm never gonna make eye contact because we're all famous for that. And don't message them 20 seconds later saying, hey, I saw you. And also, don't bring up the fact that you're a match on Tinder. To survive the awkward Tinder match encounter, simply just be yourself, glance every so often, and show a little smile, and hopefully they will do the same. I would like to welcome Wiley Olmstead to talk about his new segment about video games. Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> Well, uh, I got a new segment. It's called Game Spin. It's a, a discussion panel. We discuss the uh, latest and hopefully greatest games and give our opinions. This first episode was uh, about the game Destiny. It's a big new game that a lot of people on campus, I'm sure, are playing. And me, Rory Barbarisi, and Tyler Hadley give our honest views. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. That's cool. Why don't we take a look at their new segment about video games? <laughs> What's up, Val Gamers? I'm Wiley Olmstead, and this is a new segment on the Parliament called Game Spin. Today, I'm here with Tyler Hadley and Rory Barbarisi, and we're here to discuss the game Destiny. Now, Destiny's been out for almost a month now. We've all had a good amount of time to play it. And we're here to give you our honest views and impressions of the game and our final verdict. So um, this game had a lot of hype, had a big budget, uh, 500 million. That's the estimate from some people. It's developed by Bungie, the famous uh, developer of the Halo series, published by you know the giant Activision, who also publishes the Call of Duty games. So um, what I want to go over first is what are the positives of the game? What met the big ex expectations that you had? Um, so, if you want to start us off, Tyler. All right, well, yeah, um, I really think the entire multiplayer aspect being cooperative and PvP really worked well for Destiny. I mean, I specifically bought a PlayStation 4 just to play Destiny, and... Happy I, with your decision? Yeah, I play it all the time. Um, I put a bunch of hours into it, not so much when I first bought it, I put in a lot of hours, and now it's just kind of here and there whenever I get the chance. But I still play it all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say multiplayer is a big uh, aspect of the entire game. Obviously, it's going on all the time. You have to have it to play it. Yeah, sure. Uh, Rory? Um, again, my favorite part is the multiplayer aspect, particularly on the patrol missions where you're riding around on your sparrow and you see someone over the corner and it's another player and you guys engage in fights with each other to fight against the like all the, the vex and the aliens and stuff like, like that. Like all, all the yeah. public events. All I the mean, public events, yeah. Crazy. And the fact that the um yeah, the public events trigger also is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it's definitely interesting that it's an only online game. I mean that's a first for Bungie. Um, one of the things that the multiplayer wise that was lacking for me is the lack of a chat functionality with people that you aren't friends with. I think they could have implemented that feature. Um, 
Also, the ability to trade items with people would have been nice. Um, so yeah, just little people, things like that, which maybe they could. Then people would just get trade items and get overpowered way too fast. But kind of takes away a little bit from it. But I can That's see true. why I can I mean, see why some can, people would want it. But in that aspe aspect, I they mean, can make some kind of system where they have to be some sort of a similar weapon. You can't just you know trade a crappy green for a legendary. But anyway. Uh, other great things about the game is it just looks and sounds amazing. I mean, it's got the huge budget. It obviously was put to good use in that aspect. The, it's just got some incredible scenery. You look out at the sky and you're just kind of taken aback by the visuals. You know, it's one of the games where I've actually wanted to use the screenshot feature on the mm -hmm. PS4. Um, so yeah, I mean, technically the game's really sound. It's got great gameplay. It's got very satisfying shooting mechanics, really great. Like Bungie does melee attacks better than any other developer I've ever seen. It's just yeah, satisfying, yeah. really <laughs> wham someone mm -hmm. in the face. But uh, I have a question. Sure. Have any of you guys ever played with the ball in the tower? The ball in the tower, I uh, have. <laughs> That's always a good time. Bungie's Probably the really best part of the game. But really where Bungie dropped the ball was the story. Uh, the story is just honestly an afterthought. Um, the only character that is of any significance is the ghost or little robot that follows you around. Um, and Voiced by Peter Dinklage, I might add. Voiced by Peter Dinklage, does an incredible job on Game of Thrones. Really flat delivery in this game. He's just, uh, I mean, he doesn't have any good dialogue to work mm -hmm. with, but uh, it just, you just start to tune him out after a while. There is a shrine here, but it's further in the Hellmouth than anywhere we've been. We should try to destroy it before it's too late. So, did you guys think that the story was... No, yeah, I, I completely agree. There's really not many characters at all, really. There's you, the ghost, the speaker, the vanguard, the queen, and then all of the enemies. But nobody really plays that big of a... I mean, you have to wonder if they really meant to make the story so insignificant? Well, for me, I'm going to give it an 8.0. Uh, I think that's a great score. It, you know, 9 would have been better, obviously, if it, the oh, story yeah, yeah, was yeah. good, if it had uh, like cinematic cutscenes, if it had you know, a great epic uh, story just like Halo did. I know, you know it's unfair to compare it to Halo, but that is, you know, that's what Bungie's known for. The game that's been around for years. Yeah, so 8.0. What about you, Tyler? Um, I'd have to give it an 8.02. I mean, it's a good game and everything, but there's, there's always a few things that it could improve on, story being one of them. Um, yeah, I'd go with 8.0. Right now, um, I'd probably give it a 7.5. I usually don't like to judge games until a year after they've been released. Mm -hmm. But um, initially, the first couple weeks as I was playing it, I was very engaged in it. I was engaged in the story, the graphics, the gameplay overall was excellent, mm -hmm. but then after all, after all that, it sort of, yeah. it sort of fell off my radar. Okay, so the final game spin score somewhere around 7.7 7, uh, when you factor in the 7.5. So, Destiny, uh, pick it up. So, join us next time on Game Spin. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
to always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Yo, it's your boy, D-Lang. And with your boy, Doty Fresh. We coming at you with our hot new single, Nothing But A Calm Thing. Music video dropping next week. Check it out. Yo, I'm Dave, and I'm a calm major. Hanging with Kang, and that's a dope brainer. Spend most of my time making TV and movies. Trying to dip it down to my many groupies. Treasure of the club, you know the deal. Showing the public actions have a mass appeal. Dealing with Dave and the parliament. All my homies gotta represent. And welcome to another exciting edition of Dealing with Dave. I love you too. You gotta love them. Okay, so on this week's show, I've decided that we're gonna put our panelists' debate skills to the test. I sat down with an expert law panel huh. and found five really old laws that, for whatever reason, are still technically in, in the system, and you could still be arrested for these things. Um, so I'm gonna start from the left here. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves? Wiley, I know you're already on the show, but. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wiley, and uh, yeah, cool. that's about it. I'm Pat, and I'm ready for this game. Uh, my name's Anthony, I'm ready. All right, great. <laughs> so guys, what we're gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna pass this hat down, and you guys are gonna each pick a law out of the hat. Um, and then you're gonna read your law out loud so people know what it is. Um, I'm gonna give each of you a minute. You're gonna, you're gonna say your piece on the law, why you think it should still be in existence. Why you? Th <laughs> that was the chair. That was the chair. No, that was you. All right. All right. Let's try it again. I'm so sorry. Stop. That was good. Oh no, we can we can keep going. I guess. Um, uh, so, <laughs> right, Wiley, control yourself. Okay. So, are we going to keep going? You're going to start over from right after they introduce themselves. Okay. Okay. Am so I looking we, at camera camera one? Uh, am I yeah. supposed to? Okay. Be looking? Right. So just do the same thing. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I'm good. I'm good. All right, five, four, three, two, one. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this hat, it's filled with a few different of these old laws. Um, I'm gonna pass it down the line here and they're going to read the law they pick aloud and then they're gonna have a minute and a half to debate to the rest of the panelists why they think that that law should still be active. And the other two panelists of course are going to be debating against them. Um, they're each gonna have the tur a turn to go and once they've all gone, we're going to judge the winner based on the loudness of the audience. That sounds fair. Woo, yeah. 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 Okay. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get started. Wiley, you have first honor since you're closest to me, of course. Okay. You want me to read it now, or are you gonna? I'll wait until the, the hat gets all okay. the way down, and then we'll read it. Eeny, meeny, meeny. I'll just pick this one. Doesn't it go eeny, meeny, miny? I don't know how it goes. Yeah, it's, All right. it does. Great. All right, so uh, Wiley, can you read your law first, please? Sure. All right. It is illegal to sell toothpaste and a toothbrush to the same customer on a Sunday. <laughs> wow. Anthony, I see All right, the look this on, is in Rhode Island. I see the look on your face down there. Anthony, can you read your, your law, please? Yeah, it is illegal to honk your car <laughs> horn at a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. Arkansas. Oh my and God. last one. Holy meatball, this is long. <laughs> Any Montes who sights a team of horses coming towards them must pull well off the road, cover his car with a blanket that hands with, wait, that blends with the countryside and let the horses pass, pass if the horses appear <laughs> sluggish, the motorist must take the car apart piece by piece and hide it under the 
nearest bushes. I'm laughing for a couple reasons. One, because that law is ridiculous, but two, because you mispronounce so many of the words in that law. I'm not very, I'm not very smart. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're going to start with Wiley first again, because he's closest to me. So, Wiley, you have that toothpaste law, right? Right. All right, so can you please reread it for the two panelists and then argue in favor of it? You have a minute and a half. You guys just go back and forth, all right? And then after a minute and a half, I'm going to cut you <coughs> off and we're going to move on to the next one. Go ahead, Wiley, start it off. Okay, so it is illegal to sell toothpaste and a toothbrush to the same customer on a Sunday. Okay, so this is a Sunday law. It obviously boils down to religious reasons or decency reasons. And first of all, if someone's buying a toothbrush and toothpaste on the same day, it means that they obviously have very raunchy teeth, very bad <laughs> breath. And probably the reason that they created this law in the first place was that it's not, you can't just you know, one day decide you're going to be an upstanding citizen with clean teeth and fresh breath. You, you've got to, like, work your way through it. And on Sunday, this is the most practical day since it is the Lord's Day. And, you know, since the toothpaste and the toothbrush, both of them together, it's going to give you, you know, fresh breath, clean teeth eventually. They want you to, you know, pay for your sins of not doing it in the first place, of not having at least one in the house. So it's really the logical thing uh, to do. <laughs> Especially since it is Sunday. It's not logical. Well, how? Can you explain why? Because people have a right to buy the toothpaste and the toothbrush. It's common sense. If I want to go to the supermarket or stop and shop or CVS, I have a right to buy both of them. Just And like, say if I'm a person who doesn't brush my teeth and I want to start now. They shouldn't punish me for that. I'm a human being with teeth. And what if my <laughs> teeth fall out? It's... That'll be their fault, and then they're gonna have to pay my dental bill. All right, Anthony. Um, I so gotta, I gotta agree with Wiley. I, I agree with that. You agree with him? Yeah, I agree with the law. I think it's a really outstanding law. It's a good Thank law you. in Rhode Island, right? In Rhode Island. Yeah. Rhode Island, state great Canadian. state. That's how it is. Yeah, great oh. state. Oh, all right. So we got two to one on the toothpaste right, issue. I'm glad I could convince you. Yeah, all you right, convinced next, me. Next down the line. I, can, can I? I'll read. Can I read your law? Yeah. <laughs> Just for everybody out there, please. Thank you. Nice catch. Thank you. Okay. So, any motorists who sights a team of horses coming towards them must pull well off the road, cover his car with a blanket that blends with the countryside, and let the horses pass. If the horses appear skittish, the motorists must take their car apart piece by piece and hide it under the nearest bushes. And that is, in fact, a law in Pennsylvania. Wow. Why should that law exist? Well, basically, for all the folks out there who don't know, horse, there are a lot of horses that die. Um, you know, they get skittish, and even if they see a car, they might, like, pass out or something. So, honestly, it's better for the horses because everyone loves horses. I mean, people love to ride horses. You know, it's just horses are a mystical creature, and I believe in animal protection. Anthony? I just don't think it's logical because there's more cars on the road than there is horses on the road. And if you have to take, if you see a horse going down the street and you have 10 cars, you have 10 cars covering the cars, People covering the cause, it's just not logical. Wiley, what, what do you got? Yeah, I'd agree. It seems like a uh, stress, uh, a uh, burden on the average citizen to carry around the, that sort of blanket uh, to, co to cover it. Uh, and also, uh, it, horses by this time in our modern society have become acclimated with the cars. I mean, you look at uh, New York City, they've got horse and, horse and uh, what are That's they true. called? Uh, horse and buggy? Horse and buggy, there, there you go. go. And, uh, you know, even though many people think that's cruel, me being one of them, right now I'm arguing the opposite side. Okay. So, you know. So, what, you got something to say? I mean, you're, you're outnumbered here, quickly. I had a feeling it would come to this. Um, Is that the best you got? <laughs> no, I'm, I, I was just about to speak, but you kind of cut me off. Right. <laughs> um, no, I, I kind of, I don't like that, like, you have to take apart your car. But, I mean, if horses get skittish, like, they kind of have a slow brain, and, like, if they think that they're going to die, then... I don't even know how to take apart a car. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. I mean, I know some people do, but, you know, 99% of people don't. Well, I mean, how are you going to protect the horses? I mean, I mean, it's not like there's going to be people out there. I mean, you're keep, out there. Keep them off the road in the first place. Yeah, well, keep them off the road, <laughs> yeah. They can't get... Get a car. It's they're the curious, 21st century. They're curious yeah. creatures. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop this one there. Anthony, you're last up here. All right. Let's see what you got. It is illegal to honk your horn, <laughs> your car horn, sorry, at a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. in Arkansas. And I agree with this law. 
because what happens is a Monday night, you just had a hard day at work. You're eating a sandwich, it's about 9 o'clock, 9, 10. So many honks, you get mustard all over your pants. It's, your day's ruined. You may have had a good day, and you, now it's all ruined. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does that have to do with it? Because if you honk your horn, I, I, get, I get scared really easily. So if somebody honked my, their horn, I'd have mustard all over. The sandwich would be gone. It'd be on the floor. Yeah, I get it. It could startle you, and then you could get upset, and then, you know, your sandwich would be, like, destroyed or ruined, and then you'd have to get a new sandwich, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I love a good sandwich. What if I was eating at Subway, and someone honked the horn, and I got, like, buffalo sauce all over my nice blue pants? Like, <laughs> Days over. Your Pants day's over, over, days over. You gotta go you're to the about to get off of work anyway. Go no, you're already off of work. It's 9 p.m. Well, you don't change the second you get off work. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you got out of work at like 8:59. Well, anyway, <laughs> I don't usually get so startled when I hear a honk horn that I like. Oh, you guys, are you, it's, it's, do we have to rewrite the horse law for Anthony. Like, do you, if, do you have to pull the car over every time he's <laughs> on the road because sounds like you're more skittish than the horses. Maybe, are. maybe I'll go right through a fence, through a yard. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay. Well, I was okay. So. um... Audience, you heard the <laughs> argument. <laughs> Can you guys please? I'm gonna go down the line here. If you think Wiley won this debate, please give him a round of applause. <laughs> oh, I lost. Yeah. All right. John, John, right? It's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Pat, I'm trying I'm to like, upstage I have a room. I have, I have two roommates named Pat and John. I just, I just I mix the names. Do I look up a lot. like a John to you? Well, they're twins, so I mix their names up a lot. Anyway, it's Patrick with a P. Pat, I'm sorry, Pat. Pat. Can we get a round of applause for Pat? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, Pat. You guys are a great audience. I'm sorry, Pat, John, and uh, Anthony. <laughs> round of applause. No. Okay. I mean, I think it's clear <laughs> who the winner was here. Uh, Wiley by unanimous decision. Uh, I'm Anthony, Pat, John, thanks for coming through, guys. Thanks for having us. I guess we'll really be up next it. week now. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but, anyway. uh, I'm Dave. They just had to deal with me. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Parliament. I wonder what this kid next to me is thinking about right now. Where does a dog's ass go when it stands up? You are the universe experiencing itself. Thursday happy life. This is a nice ass sweater vest. I wonder why they named Courage the Cowardly Dog Courage. Why am I wearing this monkey suit? Do I want a cookie right now? There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Which planet are we living on? What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach.
to Whip City Sports. Next week, basketball tryouts are starting. So today, I have captain and Westfield MVP, Grant Cooper. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, as a captain and tryouts starting, are you mean to the freshmen coming in? Uh, no, not at all. We like to um, we like to joke and mess around with them, but we uh, try and take it light on them because it's the, they're coming from high school, so it's, it's a big leap in to college. We're messing with the older guys, so try and keep light on the freshmen. Yeah, that's true. So what do you um, expect from, from this season? I expect big things. I mean, we have a lot of guys coming back. We have some good transfers coming in, uh, a couple good freshmen coming in, so we expect a lot. We've been working hard this summer, and hopefully we get a championship this year. Yeah, I can see the muscles. <laughs> Zoom in. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, I saw you limping in here. So does that mean preseason has already started? Oh yeah, it started up already. A lot of ice baths and ice packs. So we're getting ready for that and getting geared up for the season. Now, do you stretch before games? Like, what's your, what do you do? Uh, I don't know. I like to listen to a lot of Lady Gaga. You know, really? it, gets me, it gets me going. So I like okay. to listen to that. I stretch a little bit and uh, just get prepared for the game. Do you have any like dance moves you can show us? They're, they're, they're secret dance moves. Um, I don't, you know, I don't want to show off too much right now. Maybe next time. Anyway, so. What, since playing from freshman year, you are a confident player. Have you improved, do you think? Yeah, I think, well, freshman year, I, um, they threw me right to the Wolves. I started every game. So for me, it was a big leap from high school to college. It was, big, it was really different. But we had a lot of older guys who were great role models and helped me through it. So from freshman year to now, I feel like I'm a lot more confident. Um, I can be a mentor to the other young guys coming in. So I feel like I've made a big leap from freshman year. That's great. And rumor has it um, you have a mohawk every basketball season. Uh, usually, we I have a mohawk. Uh, haven't started growing it yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, is that good luck? Does it like help you when you hit other heads, or how does that work? Uh, it's been like I've been really superstitious ever since high school. I started it. Uh, I won a championship my senior year with the mohawk, so I figured might as well keep it going, right? You think I should get one? You might be able to pull it off. You might wow. be able to pull it off. I might have to do that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, moving on. So basketball tryouts. Um, are you coach? Are you close with the coach? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a really nice guy. Uh, when I first got here, I thought he was crazy. Uh, <laughs> he's real hot tempered and stuff like that. But um, he's really a great guy, and he looks out for his players, and he has the best best interest in mind. So during the huddle, is it your coach or is it you who gives the pep talks? Um, it depends on during the game. Sometimes I try to give the pep talks, but my coach kind of pushes me out the way, and <laughs> sometimes he tries to give the pep talks, and I kind of push him out the way. So I mean. We have a great relationship where we respect each other and we respect when they're trying to talk to the team, it's their turn, and when I'm right. trying to talk to the team, it's my turn. So That's great. Definitely. So you said you won um, the championship in high school? Yes. And I've heard you have six brothers? Six brothers and uh, three sisters. Wow. Oh, so yeah. you're trying to take after them? Oh, yeah. I mean, being the, and I'm the youngest out of all of them, so being the youngest, I always like pushed around a little bit, but they always looked out for me and they have the best interests in mind, so they're always looking out. So I try and do whatever I can to make them proud. Great. Wow. Family of ten. <laughs> Did you guys wrestle a lot? Oh yeah. Played five on five. Almost. We almost. Yeah, we had enough for five on five, so it was pretty cool. So you've been playing all your life. Actually, baseball was my, my favorite sport oh, growing up. Wow. I didn't start playing. Uh, I didn't take basketball serious until uh, freshman year of high school. So, baseball was my first love, but they started throwing the ball too fast, so <laughs> I had to get out of there. Strike up. Well, we're glad you're on the team here. And for any of those um, people trying out, what advice would you give them? Um, just be confident. I mean, we're, we're, I feel like we're a great group of guys who, if you're able to con contribute to the team, you're, we open and welcome arms and uh, just have fun. Like, we're a great group of guys who like to have fun and just come out and be confident. Yeah, well, this is great. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. And, <laughs> and this season, look out for number 32. Thank you for watching the Parliament. Please stay tuned for next week. Thank you.